So Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 1 has been announced. Everyone's talking about it, and since it seems to bring in random viewers, so shall I. Alrighty then, let's get it on. Like many people in my age group, I did actually grow up with Sonic the Hedgehog on the Genesis. Sonic 2 came out with some incredible advertising, and it was a great novelty having, you know, two actual characters playable at the same time. And it was just awesome. It looked great, it sounded great, and it was a ton of fun. I loved 1 through 3, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic CD, and I was fully on board with Sonic Chaos and Triple Trouble on the Game Gear, and I even somehow managed to convince myself that Spinball was an okay game for several years. Um, the Saturday morning cartoons were awesome, and I was fully into the uh, storyline of Sonic the Hedgehog. The comics kind of continued that storyline, and while they were admittedly kind of horrid looking back, they still featured some of my favorite characters, and it was light-hearted fun, so it wasn't that bad, and I was on board with that for about 50 issues or so. And then Sonic the Hedgehog went really downhill. 3D Blast by Traveler's Tale is a shit game that gave me headaches, and after that, Sega completely failed to deliver on the Saturn. I don't know how. This must be one of the most outrageous oversights Sega has ever made. While the US Sega team was working on that failure of a product known as uh, Sonic Extreme, which from the videos I've seen, it does look like it would have turned out to be a terrible mess, so maybe it is best that they pulled the plug on that, but Sonic Team from Japan should have been working on a great game at the exact same time as well, and probably some other random studio, just to make sure that Sega delivered in full force with their most popular product at the time, Sonic the Hedgehog, but they didn't. We got a Genesis port of that wretched 3D Blast, we got Sonic R, which was a novelty concept, but the gameplay just wasn't there. And then that compilation Sonic Jam where you can wander around in 3D in a small little area, which was nothing but a cock tease. Also, the Archie comics that I kind of talked about before got even worse as they started to incorporate some of the uh, video game storylines as they went downhill, and it became even more incomprehensible, and they hired some of the worst professional artists I have ever seen, and that is not an exaggeration they could draw for shit on that thing later on. So then there was this small time where Sonic looked like he might be making a comeback. The Dreamcast game looked very promising at first. Sonic Adventure looked awesome the first time I saw it. And, you know, the first time I actually played it before it even came out in the U.S., someone at GameStop brought in their Japanese console and I got a spin on it with that. It was pretty impressive and... The game looked badass, but eventually they completely changed what made Sonic badass. The human world aspect made us all feel like retards, like some bad 80s cartoon spin on it all, and it was just so terrible. The story went from this oddball, amusing little thing where if you bother to actually read it in the instruction manual, you might be able to follow what's going on, but... It just changed to this in-your-face stupidity, and it was l littered with crap like Big the Cat and fishing minigames and other outright childish crap, rather than, you know, an all-ages appeal that the originals had. The exploration of the game just felt shoehorned in. Still, though, I do not consider that a bad game. I had fun with it when it was out. But ever since then, the series has been on life support, though still somehow appealing to the kitty market. Sonic X was embarrassingly terrible, even worse than that Sonic Underground. I don't know how they came up with such a shitty, childish concept for a storyline. Shadow the Hedgehog's growing prominence felt like a joke taken way too seriously. Sega completely forgot how to program video games with Sonic 2006, despite a decent video game idea being hidden away in there. The storylines became just so much worse. 
Sonic Unleashed decided to throw in a bad God of War clone at us. Trash titles like Sonic and the Black Knight started to see release. While I will say that there really is no other series that gets down the 3D based platforming at such high speeds. And it really is kind of impressive when Sonic the Hedgehog does what it does right with, say, the daytime levels in Sonic Unleashed and some moments in Sonic 2006. And I really tip my hat towards Sega for honing in on that. The company has just severely disappointed each and every one of us time and time again. Even if you like the Werehog shit in Sonic Unleashed, think about the uh, the airplane mini game in Sonic Unleashed. That is nearly unplayable, and despite the fact that Sonic basically is geared towards kids these days, they don't know the gamepad that well to actually pass that thing. I've heard many stories of where, like, a parent will have to step in just to beat that first uh, minigame airplane thing in the very beginning. And that just shows that Sega right there is not in tuned at all with who's actually playing their shit. Not with the, uh, you know, the 25 year olds that grew up with it and not with the children because that is just inexcusable. But anyway, here we are, Sonic the Hedgehog 4, announced originally as Project Needle Mouse. People are freaking out everywhere, and here is what I have to say about it. Alright, number one. It's a little disappointing that Sonic has got that too-styled-for-his-own-good look still going on. Yeah, the green eyes and that wild hair looks a little silly, but it makes sense why they'd retain it, since... It really doesn't make that big of a difference, and there's this concept called brand consistency that is extremely important for companies to, uh, you know, keep up with. Sega doesn't want to isolate all the kitties by confusing them to hell, so they need to appeal to a variety of people, rather than just the nostalgic freaks. And then number two, I am not thrilled that the game basically is taking the Sonic Rush approach with Sonic being a 3D polygon. This one right here is more of a rant on the aesthetics. I would have just much rather had a high res sprite as I would love to indulge in that nostalgia. I think that in general the 2.5D just doesn't look that great. However, this is far from being a deal breaker. This is kind of me nitpicking and I don't mind it that much. Alright, forget the numbering system. I am really curious who will actually be developing this game. Industry insiders have labeled the modern Sonic team to have degraded into basically a video gaming programming sweatshop for putting out mediocre games where they know what they're doing isn't the best, but they have deadlines, so that's what happens. Will Dimps actually be developing this? Even if they aren't labeled in the credits, I would think so most likely. Dimps has actually been on board for quite a long time, since 2001, and I don't see why they would get rid of them now, especially considering the likelihood that contracts exist that will keep them tied to the series, and the fact that, well, they've been developing so many games already, and that they probably have half of the artistic assets already done, and it at least some of the gameplay engine that they would need. Would Sega really want to, you know, throw that all away and then just take a chance with some other company doing 2D Sonic? Because Dimps really has kind of proved themselves to at least be somewhat worthy. I really doubt it. So will this thing actually turn out good? The Sonic Rush games are pretty good, but not spectacular. There is a definite change in how the levels were designed between the prominent handheld series and the originals. The originals tended to favor more exploration and platforming elements, while the handheld series was big on keeping the high speeds. And this is generally, remember, not always true. One thing though to keep in mind is that the developers are pretty limited with what they can do on a handheld. A character needs to be a certain size in order to remain visible, and that leaves for limited room in the viewable level to the left and to the right of the character. Level designs need to be modified in order to still be playable, which can make them feel a little watered down or limited compared to their console comparisons. Take for example New Super Mario Bros. DS versus the New Super Mario Bros. Wii version. You can tell that they're from the same mindset of people, but with the expanded viewable screen on the Wii game, the Wii game just truly shines while the DS version feels a little generic and played out, like the ideas are there, but for whatever reason they couldn't capitalize on it, 
So really, it is my hope that this same concept will ring true for Sonic 4. That while the handheld games were decent, Sonic 4 will really take advantage of the television screen in presenting some really killer levels. And really, since Sonic does move pretty fast, I would think it would be even more important here. The potential is here for a good game. I think that they could pull off something. If they can modify the gameplay engine to ever so slightly react a little more in tune with how Sonic 3 played out, we will just be golden. Of course I remember the Sonic cycle where everything turns out to be a big disappointment, but all in all I think there's a good chance that this will be a decent game. Will it be the ultimate comeback for Sonic? I doubt it. Will it be an incredible game? I kind of doubt that too, but I put my money down on the final product being at least worth checking out and fun. That is my prediction. So do you agree, disagree? Leave a comment or make a video response. Thanks for watching.